The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, fine tobacco. Season after season, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. American. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, four weeks ago, Jack Benny got into trouble with his sponsor because he fired his quartet. Despite the fact that Jack auditioned several singing groups, he could find no suitable replacement. So now we find Jack at home, where he has just started to type a letter to his old quartet, the Sportsman. Gentlemen. Now, now that sounds too businesslike to start off with. Let's see. Dear sirs. Now, now, that's still too formal. I, I've got it. My darling sportsman. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Hmm, my, my darling sportsman. Now, that's a little too personal. I'll knock out the my. <laughs> now, let's see. Fellows, I hope... You will receive this letter in the spirit in which it is sent because... Whoop! (laughs) Silly me, it's only us. I am willing to let bygones be bygones. I know that you boys want more money, but, but, (laughs) but, (laughs) gee, I even do it on the typewriter. Let's see. I know you want more money, but that can be discussed later. I realize that apologies at this point would be superfluous. Hmm. Superfluous. S-U-T-U. No, no, that doesn't look right. Oh, Rochester, how do you spell superfluous? S-U-P-E-R-F-L-U-O-U-S. Thank you. would be superfluous, but I'm sure we can iron out any discrepancies. Hmm. Rochester, how do you spell discrepancies? D-I-S-C-R-E-P-A-N-C-I-E-S. Thank you. (laughs) Iron out any discrepancies that may come up. Yours sincerely, Jack Benny. B-E-N-N. I know how to spell it. Rochester, do you think this letter will do any good? I don't think so, boss. They wouldn't even talk to you when you went to see them. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, this letter isn't right. I'll throw it away. Rochester! Rochester! What's the matter, boss? What happened? I had my tongue caught in a roller. (laughs) It hurts. Let me see. Ah. Mmm, you spell superfluous wrong after all. (laughs) 
never mind. Gee, Rochester, I don't know what to do about a quartet. Well, boss, I thought the quartet you had last Sunday was pretty good. Yeah, each one of them is a great soloist. Dennis Day, Andy Russell, Dick Hames, Bing Crosby. But I know, but when you put them together, what have you got? Personally, I'd rather have Hugo Carmichael. (laughs) You know, boss, if you need any help, I can sing a little bit like Mr. Crosby myself. You? When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Rochester. Rogers, if you think you sing like Bing Crosby, then I play the violin like Yasha Heifetz. Oh, you do, boss. You do. <laughs> Thanks. Excuse me. There's someone at the door, Yasha. <laughs> I'll get it, Bing. You put the typewriter away. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. I wasn't. I was expecting you earlier. Well, I would have been here sooner, but I was working out in the garden all morning. You were? How are the flowers coming? Fine, only I shouldn't have bought the seeds at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Why not? I was wearing a sunsuit, and the snapdragons kept snapping at me. (laughs) I don't blame them, Livy. You've got better stems than they have. (laughs) Oh, Jackson, it's only the second day of spring, and you're in full bloom already. (laughs) Jack. (laughs) <laughs> Jack, why must you always go along with a gag? Because I feel good. But, Mary, it doesn't seem possible the flowers in your garden are up already. You only planted them a few weeks ago. I know, but I scattered plenty of Vigoro around. That stuff really makes things grow. It does? Vigoro, huh? Say, I wonder if... No, and anyway, it would look messy on your head. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that. But you know, Mary, I like gardening and flowers and growing things. You know, in fact, I saw a preview of a picture the other night. The egg and I. It was wonderful. Claudette Colbert is married to Fred McMurray. And they live on a little farm where it's quiet and peaceful. And they raise their own chickens and eggs and grow their own food and everything. Gee, I wish I had that. A farm? No, Fred McMurray. <laughs> Well, I can see you're not the type that's interested in farming. Now, look at me. In my garden, I raise carrots, peas, lettuce, all kinds of useful things. Well, Jack, I know it saves you a little money, but I think you're going too far. What do you mean? You even grow rice in the shallow end of your swimming pool. (laughs) I do not. Mary, if you keep talking like that, next fall when I pick my grapes, I won't let you help me make wine out of them. Good. I had enough of that wine making last time. My feet were purple for two weeks. All right, all right. It stained my bathtub, too, you know. I'll get it, Bing. Okay, Yasha. <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Come on in, kid. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. I passed your house this morning, and I saw you working in the garden. Boy, that sunsuit you were wearing. <laughs> Dennis. My mother has a sunsuit just like Mary's, only it's yellow. Oh, really? Yeah, when she wears it, she looks like the Wilshire bus with lace bumpers. <laughs> well, look, kid, Mary and I are leaving for the studio in a few minutes. Have you any idea what you're going to sing today? Oh, sure. Well, let me hear it first, and then we'll... Hey, Dennis. Yeah, I just noticed it. You've got a scratch on your nose. How'd you get it? Well, I was riding down here on a bicycle built for two, and I ran into a telephone pole. Well, how did that happen? There was nobody on the front seat to steer it. <laughs> Well, Dennis, why didn't you sit on the front seat? I've got two shows. Why should I drive? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Come on, Tim. Let's have this
I'll never say yes when you love a fair. I'll close my eyes to everything that's gay. If you're not there, who share each lovely day? lovely song. I'm glad you're going to sing it on the program. You really... Dennis, what are you taking your shoes off for? Isn't it time to make the wine? <laughs> no, not till after we pick the cotton. Oh. Lift that bale. Tilt that bar. Well, come on, kids. We'll go to the studio. Huh? Say, say, Mr. Benny, what are you going to do about a quartet? I don't know. I want to get my old quartet, the sportsman, back, but I don't know how to go about it. Say, Jack, I've got an idea. Why don't you go over and talk to their manager? I bet he'll help you get the boys back. Well, I say that might help at that. Rochester, get the car out. We're going into town. See you later, Dennis. Rochester, try the starter again. Oh, Jack, we've been trying to start the car for 20 minutes. Let's take a cab. Don't worry, Mary. It'll start. Rochester, try it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Step on the starter again, Rochester. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with the spark plug. I don't think so. I cleaned them both this morning. <laughs> well, we'll try it once more. If it doesn't work this time, we'll take a cab. Yes, sir. It started. It started. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Yes, sir. I knew it could do it. Oh, why don't you get a new car? I never heard a motor that carries on so much. I know, Mary. It's a little mad at me since I made a join after us. <laughs> Rochester, take us to 1507 Benedict. Well, this is their manager's house, Mr. Stewart. I wish I'd sent my lawyer to sort of pave the way for me. Pave the way? Yeah, yeah. You know, talk to him first to see how he feels. Say, Mary, you can do that. Oh, but Jack... Go ahead, ring the bell. I'll hide behind the head. Oh, okay. Yes? Uh, how do you do? My name is Mary Livingston, and I work for Jack Benny. Oh. Well, go around to the back door. I'll give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Hmm. 
Uh, can you spare two cups of coffee? Certainly. Come on out, Jack. I paved the way. Very funny. Very funny. Now, look, Mr. Stewart, I didn't come here only for coffee. I came here to talk to you about the quartet. Well, come right inside and we'll talk it over. Good, good. Come on, Mary. Well, I'll wait in the car. Okay, this won't take long. Now, Mr. Stewart, to show that my heart's in the right place, I'm willing to take the quartet back and not deduct anything for the three weeks they've been off. Well, I have the new contract all prepared, and if you'll just sign it, everything will be fine. Gladly, gladly. I'll sign right... Wait a minute. Look at this Clause 8. Why are these words scratched out? Well, we made a slight change in the clause where it said they have to mow your lawn. <laughs> slight change? Now you have to mow their lawn. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I was over to their place, and they live in an apartment. They don't even have a lawn. I know, but they're going to buy a house in Beverly Hills where there'll be plenty of grass. Well, how can those guys afford to buy a house in Beverly Hills? Read Clause 9. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I, Jack Benny, party of the first part, agree to pay to the party of the second part $5,000 a week if I... $5,000? Look, if I pay him that much money, they'd have to be the stars of the show. Read Clause 12. <laughs> now, Mr. Stewart, I don't mind paying him a little more money, but this Clause 14 is ridiculous. I'm not going to do their laundry. I don't know what you're so excited about. You've been doing it for months. I've been doing the sportsman's laundry? Well, certainly, didn't you know? Mr. Stewart, I'm a busy man. When Rochester brings in the bundles, I don't ask them who they're from. <laughs> If you stand around asking questions, your water gets cold. <laughs> if, you'll take out, if you'll take out those ridiculous clauses and make the same deal we had before, I'll sign the contract. Okay, okay. Here's a pen. All right. There you are. Now, where are the sportsmen? Well, I don't know where I can locate them, but if I do, I'll send them to your studio. Good, good. And thanks very much, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> Okay, Rochester, here we are. Let us out right here. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Rochester, you can go now, and on your way home, stop at the automobile club and get some maps. I'm going to drive to San Francisco next week. You're going to take this car up to San Francisco? Yes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It'll be easier to bring San Francisco down here. <laughs> Just make sure those two spark plugs are working. I'll get there. Come on, Mary. Let's get in the studio. Jack, why are we going to San Francisco? Well, we're going to do our broadcast next Sunday for the San Francisco-Oakland Newspaper Guild. I like San Francisco, Mary. The weather's so crisp, the scenery's so beautiful, and ah, the Golden Gate. Stop trembling. It's only painted that color. <laughs> no, but it's so nice to... Uh, hello, Mr. Benny. Pardon the intrusion. Well, well, Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Kitzel. Oh, thank you. Uh, what are you, uh... What are you doing here at NBC? Mr. Benny, I got to ask you a favor. Would it be too much trouble for you to handle these cards around to your friends? I'm in a new business now. A new business? Uh -huh. What is it? It's called Ye Old Knick-Knack Nuke and Antique Shopping. <laughs> ye Old Knick-Knack Nuke? Yes, and we have a slogan. Don't be a schnook, take a look at Kitzel's Nuke. <laughs> well, that's kind of catchy. And you have, uh, you have antiques, too? Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, if I got antiques, I got the original bed George Washington slept in it. You, you have the bed George Washington slept in? Yes, but you should excuse the chocolate on the pillow. Martha was a little careless. <laughs> Well, that's really a valuable auntie. Anyway, thanks for the cards, Mr. Kitzel. I'll give them to my friends, and someday I'll drop in myself. Oh, wonderful. And remember, Mr. Benny, we sell everything. Tables, chairs, drapes, rugs, lamps, bookcases. And if you don't see what you want, we sell eyeglasses, too. I'll remember that. By the way, Mr. Kitzel, I'm just going in to do my broadcast. Come on in with me. You can sit on the stage. Oh, thank you. How do you do, Miss Livingstone? Hello, Mr. Kitzel. You like antiques, don't you? Mr. Kitzel, there is nothing serious between Mr. Benny and myself. <laughs> Mary, don't be funny. Yeah? Hey. Oh, 
my goodness, look at the clock. The program's already started. Let's hurry. Hey, here's another one, Don. Ask me why fat men always wear suspenders. Okay. Why the fat men always... Hold wear... it, hold it. I'm here now. You can sit down. Sit down. Look, Buster, why did you stop me right when I was in the middle of a joke? What? I got the audience in the palm of my hand. I was telling gags and singing songs, and they love me. They love me. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Phil. Quiet. Don't call me Phil. They think I'm Al Jolson. Al Jolson? When April showers may come your way, yeah. <laughs> they bring the flowers, those pretty little flowers. Mammy, can't you hear Jolsey boy Phil, coming home? Phil, Phil. I'm coming home, Mammy. Phil, I'm Phil. Tell you, Mammy. <laughs> Mammy, don't stop me, Jackson. I got him rolling. It's downhill from here. <laughs> How do you like that? He was out all night, can't get up off his knees, and he thinks he's Jolson. <laughs> All right, all right, Phil. If you think you're such a great comedian, go ahead and tell that fat man joke I interrupted. All right, thanks, bub. Come on, Dante. Ask me why a fat man always wears suspenders. Okay, Phil. Why does a fat man always wear suspenders? Because he's afraid his stomach will make his belt buckle. <laughs> Bell? Buckle? You heard me. Those things on the side of your head ain't bookends. <laughs> I know, and Don, I'm surprised that you fell for a joke like that. You, of all people, should know why fat man wears suspenders. Well, I don't wear suspenders or a belt either. And what keeps your pants up? The NBC censor. <laughs> oh, Wilson, you take up half the stage, but you're worth it. <laughs> What kind of a show is this? Phil is Al Jolson, Don is Phil Harris. Mary, who would you like to be? This is Fred McMurray. Now cut that out. <laughs> Seems the only sensible one around here is Dennis. Just call me John Charles Thomas. <laughs> well, it's my own fault for... Thank heaven, and I don't care who it is. Come in. Well, look who's here. <laughs> my old quartet, the sportsman. Boys, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you back. No, don't hum. I can, I'll do the talking. And, Mr. Stewart, uh, you came with us. Yes, Mr. Benny. I knew how anxious you were to have them again and to hear their glorious voices, so I spared no effort to find them today. Isn't that right, fellas? <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> you see, Mary, it's not only me, you see. Don, look, your children are back. Aren't you happy? You bet I am, Jack, and I'm glad you feel the same way. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Stewart, now that the boys are here, have they got a number? They certainly have. And to celebrate their return, they want you all to join in. All of us? Well, that's fine. Come on, boys. Let's have it. Old Jack Benny had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on this farm, tobacco grew, E-I-E-I-O. With a big leaf here and a big leaf there, here a leaf, there a leaf, everywhere a big leaf. Old Jack Benny had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old Jack Benny likes to smoke, L-S-M-F-T. Likes to smoke and that's no joke, L-S-M-F-T. With a puff, puff here and a puff, puff there, here a puff, there a puff, everywhere a puff, puff. Old Jack Benny likes to smoke, L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> There's one thing you must learn. Take a tip from me. It's so round and it's so firm. L-S-M-F-T. With a round round here and a firm firm there. Here a round, there a firm. Everywhere a round firm. That's one thing that you must learn. Take a tip from me. Old Jack Benny loves to play. L-S-M-F-T. On his fiddle night and day. ay 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 With a squeak, squeak here and a squeak, squeak there. Here a squeak, there a squeak, everywhere a squeak, squeak. Old Jack Benny always plays L-O-U-S-Y. <laughs> Jackson Benny is so cheap. C-A-G-A-P. Why, he won't spend a dime a week. T-I-G-H-T. With a no-tip here and a no-tip there. Here a no, there a no, everywhere a no-tip. Old Jack Benny is so cheap. C-A-G-A-P. <laughs> Mr. Benny, how did you? H-E-L-L-O. I can always laugh on you. Ho, 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 ho. With a hoo-hoo here and a hoo-hoo there. Here a hoo, there a hoo, everywhere a hoo-hoo. Mr. Benny, how did you? H-E-L-L-O. Jackie Benny is so sweet. Sweet as apple pie. And he's a fella hard to beat. B-E-M-N-Y. 
With a blue eye here and a blue eye there. With a hoo-hoo here and a hoo-hoo there. With a no-tip here and a no-tip there. With a squeak-squeak here and a squeak-squeak there. With a round-round here and a firm-firm there. With a puff-puff here and a puff-puff there. With a big leap here and a big leap there. Here a leap, there a leap, everywhere a big leap. Old Jack Penny had a farm. L-S-M-N-G. That was absolutely wonderful. I'm glad you're back, and from now on, I'll let... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Mr. Benny? Yes? <laughs> Mr. Benny has a car. T-R-A-S-H. It's a car that won't go far. C-R-A-S-H. With a no-clutch here and a no-break there. Here, Nick, there, not everywhere, Nick, not... Rochester! I'm not finished yet! <laughs> you are, too, and Goodbye. I like my car, I like my cash, I like my quartet, and Phil, I even like your lousy band. Let's hear them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the American Red Cross is in the midst of one of, of, one of its most important campaigns to continue helping our hospitalized fighting men and veterans both here and overseas to say nothing of its many other services to our communities. Please give generously to your local Red Cross chapter. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here's Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember, L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Listen to the words of a man who really knows tobacco, Mr. Charles L. Belvin of Durham, North Carolina. He's been an independent tobacco buyer for 16 years, and he said, The makers of Lucky Strike buy good, ripe, mild tobacco. Season after season, I've seen them do it. And take my word for it, the fine tobacco makes one swell smoke. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 16 years. Quote, The makers of Lucky Strike buy good, ripe, mild tobacco. Unquote. At auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Belvin can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Certainly. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday night we're broadcasting from San Francisco. Now don't forget, kids, we want to be there for their big frolic Saturday night. Mr. Benny, I don't want to go on such a long trip. What? Last time I went to San Francisco, I was on the train for eight days. Eight days? What are you talking about? You get on the train here at night, and the next morning you get off. Oh, get off! Oh, quiet. Good night. NBC, the national broadcasting company.